Yes, hello guys, how are you? Uh, and again, uh, my name is Regan uh, and I work from Deep Code Innovations here in Kampala, Uganda. So today we are going to be handling um, cash. If you understand what means by cash, then today you better come and learn uh, the better ways of using it to do your mobile application better. So uh, you should understand also that uh, all the code snippets you're going to be looking at and what i'll be explaining is that uh we've taken some time made some research to come with such code snippets so in case you don't understand from this video please i will understand that you it's very hard to understand and uh, then you will have to consult for more information please uh try to not uh try to not uh, stop yourself from making any consultations you can reach uh, me on plus two five six uh, seven zero one zero two six nine thirteen that's what's up or you can even visit uh, the website www.deepcodeinnovations.com for more information and uh thanks for the guys for the music and the background uh now we are going to start at a single function here I won't uh, be so much technical. I'll make sure that even the person who doesn't really know the coding language can really understand this. So this function here, let's start with this function. So this function is in a file, is in a file called services. It's an API provider. So we are starting with this function because I want you guys to really be analytic to, to really learn so one it is make a request so we can start uh, uh, making a request making a request to the back end you get so i'm naming my function make request to make sure if i'm running requests i understand what i'm it's really an easy naming uh, like in a word to, to grab to grasp so i'm passing data which is a string and i'm passing a url which is also a string and i'm passing the type which is also a string and i'm passing a string which is a file url or a file data let's call it so i'm also requesting for the auth token from the storage then uh, this one was basically for debugging purposes. I can remove it or I can leave it there. But uh, let's go ahead. So my thing is this file, I have to make sure that my, my make request function can do a lot of things. One, it can save uh, multiple files. That means it can uh, uh, transfer, it can uh, save files that include images, PDF, any document. Then it can also uh, go with the plain, uh, plain data, which is down here. So this, I, I check if the file data or the file URL is now, and if it is now, then I just run a plain, a plain function to make the request to the back end. And basically, most of our functions, most of them are with post requests. The reason being that we usually pick information from uh, the device, let me say, or from uh, the web application. Let me say we can keep track of the browser you're using, we can keep track of the phone you're using. So each request you make, it's logged in the function in the back end. There is a function that looks uh, that. Um, that information so that we can really verify it soon later or any other time so i'm not going to explain this i was trying to show you that if you meet where we have make request this is a one request it's a one function that is making all the back end requests it is one it's going to be making all the back end requests so <clears throat> the next thing we are going to also go to uh, is we are going to go through render API response. So uh, now this render API response, it brings in the data, it brings in the request function and it brings in the data loading uh, value. So the data loading value 
it's loading it can set buttons to load it can set pages to load so this is one function so you're going to also see it somewhere where we are going to do it where we are going to be doing some functions so it is called render api response it communicates with what is in the services so let me give you an example let me say i'm making a lessons a lessons request so i'm going to have in my services folder i'm going to have what they call lessons requests so i'm going to have what they call lessons api then i can pass get training lessons get training for you they have different endpoints so i'm going to show you so they have different endpoints as you can see so for me to be able to, uh, to tell the difference between different endpoints and make different requests so i use this you can see now this one ends with a comment this one ends with an id this one ends with an id so i'm requesting different things to different endpoints uh, and um without this one comes without a url so in our make request okay, in our make request uh when i come here you can see make request i'm passing the data the url and the type what is the type it's a post request what is the url is this is the endpoint so what where is the data the data is passed when i'm trying to fetch this one when i'm trying to fetch get training libraries so this data basically if you're passing if you're fetching and let me say a list of things they can be pagination data per page data uh it it helps you to uh to make all these things so easy by randomizing like uh, it's so easy as long as i finish this you are uh, this function other things are so easy to make requests so you understand they are so short and uh, i also have this function that i had shown you before in my global controller which is render api so my global controller is called on every other control so that means i can call this function to make requests and also return the data so you can see i try then it sets the data loader true then it, it makes a request the request function which is also passed which i will show you then now i return the data so i request if data is null i i check my data based on uh, what i have what i'm looking for and i also can show a custom snack bar so uh this basically is for advanced level flutter learners who would love to uh basically make themselves better in flutter so this is the best way to use cash which i'm going to show you i first showed you this to make sure that uh, you don't have to really uh not understand what these functions do when you find them in the what in the future so uh now the fact that you know that render response uh goes to comes with the request function a data load and the data then this same information this same information you can see the render function this same information will be passed on to the let me say let's take an example of lessons it will be passed on as data then it goes to the make request which is an api this is a one function that all does all the request to the server so um so if you find any problem this is basically a code that has been worked on for a long time so we always uh, contact different people to help us come up with some certain codes uh, code snippets that can make coding better so also we'll sit down with our heads and try to come up with better ways to make requests to the server so easy so this cache caching is is almost the same so we've sat down and worked on something like that so let's start with this hmm? so one uh, probably when you open my page uh, when you open the page let me close this let me close this uh -huh. 
get lessons lesson details from API. Let me close this. Send lesson comments. Uh, so many functions here. Uh, so I have here now. When you open the trending uh, page one, it's going to run this function. So when it runs it runs this function, what is it going to do? Hmm? It is going to first it's going to check in the hash if the this training value training value is not null. You get this training value is the name you can see is the name under which uh data has been stored into cache so if i return my cache data and it's not empty that means i'm directly loading this data onto the model so that i can use this model in my dat file my view file so i set the loading value first then i also reload data from the api you understand what works so if it's fine if it finds it's null it's going to also load that data from the api so this one helps you to always update your data let me say you loaded this a month ago and it's still in your cache so when you come back on and you open this page the next time it is going to do what to will to load that data immediately but then also load data from what from uh, the back end which is automatically updated so how do we automatically update the data from the back end so this is loading data from the api you understand so for us to be able to load data from the api well, that means you are going to talk to the back end server you understand so one we are going to do is to make a request function like the way i told you that render api response passes what they call data passes a request function and the data loader so here the data loader is, is loading which is set up up there then uh, the request function is lesson api dot get training lesson so this one comes into the comes into this you understand so this one is helping you to connect all the dots now hope you're understanding you're connecting the dots so let's go back to lessons so after that it makes a render api response it, 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 now it calls this function and it passes the data so i can pass the prepare page in the back end in the back end there is uh, function so the function you have to pass per page sort by so i can set them under my data but now i'm not going to put them there so this one we return data like as i told you before this one is going to return data and in case it is successful if it is not successful it's just going to return now you see this one returns a custom snack bar it, it is only going to return data if the function is what is successful and this one helps us to say if data is now full stop then we can do the rest if it is now you can understand that means there's nothing that should happen the data is now there's no intent there is no what the data is now so it shouldn't update the already catch data but if it is not now and we set the loading value to false so now we call that return response and so these are the parameters where we are going to call the data from so if data is a list this is where we call our model we turn that to a list and we map it so we have the api data here so let's get also the cache data from the cache so we are getting get data from cache and we are passing the name under which we saved this information so get data from cache we have our functions below these are functions that we put on every controller so get data from cache get object from cache update data destroy data so we can destroy data get data and get a single object from that data so what do we we are still here so now what we are going to do is we are going to get that data so we are going to say if this data is not null still if it is null it's going to update like a okay, cache with the with this with this under this title so 
this is a string in which the data is saved as i'll show you later so this is the data that is going to be saved you understand so we set this also data uh, what on trending i think um, so we set this data to the trending lesson so that when you call it in the view it is working fine you understand so but um for this one hmm, if you find this cache is not enough so what are we going to we are going to get uh, the data hmm? we are going to remove to only black out the ids of this data hmm? the api data we are going to pluck out the ids so after plucking out the ids um we also pluck out the, we we get the new data that uh, we get the api data okay this is a new data id so the new the api data this is the data from the api this is um, data from the api and uh, this is data this is cache data i think that's uh, a small error here so we are supposed to black out the data here so we plug up the ids of the cache data hmm? so after plugging out the ids of the cache data so we check if those ids are contained in the api data that was brought back so we remove the duplicates the way you see here and we merge them together and then we save this data back in the cache then we also update you you understand uh, how this function is working if you understand please uh, leave a comment if you're not understanding how this function works please uh, try to contact me i will try to explain it to you and uh, it will help you solve a lot of problems so if i'm on my app here it will load so fast it doesn't have to go to go back to the back end now all these are back end requests so if i try to go here you can see it's showing data but this one is still pending i think you saw the server is a little bit fast it's showing data but this data is still what is still pending why do you think it's showing data when uh the the the, the data from the back end is still pending because it's picking data from the uh, from the cache and it's up later updating the data from the cache with the data from the uh, back end then matching it together so this is how all this thing works. So if you have any any questions about this, please let me know. If you didn't understand how this thing works, let me know so that I can help you. First, you have to understand that you have to call this function, or you can actually put all your functions in one function, which will be hectic, hectic at the end of the day. Uh, but that's how it works. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I will try to answer them uh, the way they come. Thank you very much.